Hey guys, today is the very first time checking out the FM1 platform. Now this is from 2011 and it was rather short lived because only a bit over a year later AMD launched the FM2 platform. Now FM1 supports APUs which have Radeon graphics integrated but also regular CPUs which needed a dedicated graphics card to work. The list of APUs and CPUs for FM1 is nice and compact. We've got the APUs with model numbers starting A4, A6 and A8, whereas the CPUs with the integrated graphics are Semprons or Athlons. We have dual, one triple and also quad cores available and with the APUs the higher models have much more powerful graphics with up to 400 shaders or stream processors. Now we will definitely check out these APUs in future videos, but today we're checking out the fastest FM1 CPU, which is the Athlon X4 651K. This CPU has four cores running at 3 GHz. The CPU launched in 2012 and has a TDP of 100 watts. It sells for around $26 on AliExpress and this is the K model, so we have an unlocked multiplier. Also worth mentioning is that the FM1 platform has support for any operating system starting from Windows XP to Vista 7, 8 and also Windows 10, which includes the APU graphics, AHCI SATA support and everything else, so that's really good to see. I also noticed that the CPUs are cheaper compared to the APUs. This makes sense as the integrated graphics is the whole point of having such a FM1 platform. But for gaming with a dedicated graphics card, you can save a little bit of money by choosing the Athlon processor without integrated graphics. Now for this project I needed a FM1 motherboard, so I had a look on AliExpress and I found a nice gigabyte board which was full ATX and cost only $29.99 and it is the Gigabyte GAA55S3P Revision 2.0. The board has a ton of slots and boards for PCI Express but also PCI and we're getting a total of 6 SATA ports which is very nice. This motherboard does only have 2 memory slots but it supports 8GB of DDR3 memory modules so for a total capacity of 16GB which is plenty for games. I'm using memory that can do 1600 MHz with 99924 timings. However, through a XMP profile, which is something from Intel. Now, how does this work with AMD? Well, you just go into the BIOS. There's an option called EOCP, which is, uh, stands for Extended Overclock Profile. And here you just select Profile 1, which then activates the XMP uh, profile from the SPD on the memory and now the memory runs at 1600 MHz with 99924 timings. When I receive a motherboard from China I usually test it on the same day and I noticed straight away there were some issues. So I started testing with the A6 3500 and I simply couldn't get a picture out of the HDMI interface. I also had issues with some of the USB ports not working. So I used a dedicated video card and here I would get a picture just fine, so at least the motherboard was working. And for USB, I simply connected them to one of these headers on the motherboard. Now I've had motherboards with similar flaky issues in the past. It's usually not a good sign because over time more little issues develop. Now a little trick is removing these uh, frames here for the CPU cooler and underneath I found a lot of dirt and dust so that kind of gave me a little bit of an insight to the history of this motherboard. Um, it definitely got cleaned and it was in very filthy condition. So yes, it went under the shower and for those of you uh, uh, freaking out right now, it's not an issue. This motherboard endured years of being exposed to dust and dirt. Uh, five minutes of bit of water makes no difference. We have uh, nice weather here, 40 degrees in Australia, so uh, over 24 hours this motherboard dried up nicely. And look at that, the HDMI port started working and half of the USB ports also started working, but not all of them. We'll get to the benchmarks and some gameplay shortly, but let's have a look at all the other components. The video card is a Radeon RX 570 with 4GB of VRAM. For storage, I'm using a 240GB SSD for the operating system and all the games are on a 2TB hard drive. 
The motherboard has integrated sound, but I like using a sound blaster for my testing. And for cooling, I'm using the AMD 125W thermal solution. And now let's have a look at some benchmarks, starting with 3 d Mark in CloudGate, 11,206 in Skydiver, 14,609 and a Firestrike, 8,030. I also have some results for Cinebench R15, we're getting 292 and I also have some power draw results. Idle only 47 watts on the, sitting on the desktop, so that's really good. And under load 122 watts, so the load result is also running Cinebench. Now this is a unlocked processor, so I had a quick go at some overclocking at 3.3 gigahertz. We're getting 321 in Cinebench. I then tried 3.6 gigahertz, but got a blue screen while loading Windows. I dialed down to 3.5 gigahertz. Here I got a blue screen while running Cinebench and at 3.4 gigahertz it would complete Cinebench with a result of 332. So we got around uh, a 10% of an overclock out of this CPU. And now let's have a look at some games. I actually have quite a lot of games tested for this one and I will put some information about the detail settings at the bottom of the video. Still no salt leads on who's leading who cool Trinity cell. But I talked to some people in town. They're excited. There's a VIP coming to the Day of the Dead. Name's Dominguez. We should look into it. So, a griffin this close to the village? Strange. My thoughts exactly. In the forest or the mountain, sure, but here? And near the main road. Maybe it's the war. Corpses everywhere, the stench of blood, burnt flesh. It drives monsters crazy sometimes. Men, too. We need to watch ourselves in White Orchard. And we should leave as soon as we learn anything. Uh. Fully charged and good to go. Sierra 3. Sierra 3 has already been allocated. What she means is your gin-soaked ass is surplus to requirements. But you wanted action, Sierra 2. Well, now you've got it. Yeah, okay. Ground support. I copy. Sierra 2 command. Priority is target acquisition and neutralization. Secondary is recon. Keep your comm cam rolling. I've detected the Korean mill net. Access their tactical network and let's see what they've got cooking. With a bit of luck, we might be able to pick up more than just intel. Got that backwards, lady. I'm hunting you. Here, got to get inside. Left two, six feet from dip. Keep left of the crest. Right six, don't get. Left six, into right five, into caution. Left three, keep 
Bend narrows, front two, into left four, crest, don't cut, front five, don't cut, 80 through dip, left five long, tightens, into front three, left four, tightens, and front three. If we're gonna win this race, you're gonna have to get past Marcelo. So what's my take on Socket FM1? Well, the main reason to use this platform is really to install one of these APUs with integrated graphics and get a good balance between CPU and GPU power while not having to buy a dedicated video card and saving a bit of money. Now we tested the top FM1 CPU today because they're much cheaper and I just wanted to see what it's like. The performance we could see in games today is pretty much on the level of a typical Athlon processor running at 3 GHz like you would see on Socket AM3. A good example is the Athlon 2X4640 which also runs at 3 GHz. But AM3 has a lot more options. The Athlons come with higher clock speeds, then you get all the faster Phenom 2 processors, and you can gamble a little bit with unlocking a dual or triple core processor. The games we tested all run pretty well. Having 16 gig of RAM and a SSD certainly helps. The machine felt responsive and has enough speed to be used as a daily driver. In a few games we could see that the processor is holding things back, but games that are a little bit older and can be picked up for cheap during a sale, they should run really well on this machine. So if your plan was to get a cheap quad-core system together with a dedicated graphics card, it doesn't really make sense. You're better off getting the AM3 instead, especially considering that prices are quite similar and a 3 GHz quad-core CPU doesn't cost much at all. But I enjoyed working with this platform for my first time and I'm eagerly awaiting an APU so we can check out the integrated graphics. And I believe especially for Windows XP Retro Gaming this could be a very interesting platform that is minimalistic without a dedicated video card and hopefully has decent performance. Of course we want to look at FM2 as well. Here we have similar choices between CPUs and APUs, but the clock speeds are a lot more interesting. They go past 4 GHz, so that should give a nice performance boost, and I can't wait to see what such a system can do. So guys, there you have it. FM1 laid the foundation for these APUs, but there are also some cheap CPUs available. However, we found there is very little benefit compared to AM3, so for gaming with a dedicated video card, I recommend that you're going with AM3 instead. It is the much better choice. It does everything that FM1 can do, but even better. FM1 is all about using APUs with integrated Radeon graphics, and that's something we will look at in future videos. So guys, there you have it. That was a look at the FM1 platform 
and yeah let me know what you think about this system down below in the comments also what other projects could we look at in future videos always eager to hear your thoughts and that's pretty much it for this video guys thank you so much for watching if you found it interesting and you want to see more videos like this please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and thanks for watching i shall see you soon with another one